Now let's look at some other types of elasticities. Elasticity of supply, basically calculated the exact same way as the elasticity of demand, uh, is the percent change in the quantity supplied over percent change in price. So, and same thing where you can apply the midpoint formula where it's difference over average for that quantity and for the price. Notice one thing is this is not always going to be positive naturally, so you don't even need the absolute values because it's always going to be positive because the supply curve slopes upwards. Now, cross price elasticity. What that is, is it's a percent change in the quantity of one good divided by the percent change in the price of some other good. Now here notice we don't have absolute values because in fact what's key is not whether it's bigger than one or less than one, like regular elasticity, but whether it's positive or negative. Because let's say some good in the world's price goes up. Well, if you now want more of some other good when the other guy's price went up, that means these two goods were in competition with each other, like Coke and Pepsi. If Coke becomes expensive, you now want more Pepsi instead. So then a positive price change uh, is related to, you know, it sort of goes with a positive quantity change. So overall, positive over positive is positive. So if your cross price elasticity is a positive number, then the two goods in question are called substitute goods. So substitutes On the other hand, if it's a negative cross price elasticity, well, that's kind of like regular demand elasticity, right? where the price goes up and then you want less of the good, right? Well, then those two goods are something that you have together, like milk and cereal. If milk becomes expensive, you also want a lower quantity of cereal. So those goods then are complements. So that's what cross price elasticity tells you. Simply being positive or negative will tell you whether the two goods are substitutes or complements. And finally, income elasticity, percent change in Q over percent change in income. Notice, by the way, for all of these, you can measure them in terms of uh, using the, um, the midpoint formula, just like you did for the other ones. So really, it's percent change difference over average. Even though it's income instead of a price, it's still, if your income goes from 20 to 30,000, it's really just the difference of 10 over the average of 25. So you can always do it that way. And here what this is conceptually telling you is that if this is positive, that means as your income goes up, you now want to buy more of that good. Well, then that's just a normal good, right? That's how we define normal goods, something that you want more of when your income goes up or less of when your income goes down. But if this is a negative, uh, negative income elasticity, again, that would happen when when the denominator is positive but the numerator is negative, for example. So here, if your income goes up, you're making more money, and as a, as a response to that you want less of a good, well then that's a positive denominator because you're making more money, but then you want less ramen noodles because that's, you know, you want less of it, well then that's an inferior good, right? So that's what it means for income elasticity to be positive or negative. It tells you whether that good is normal or inferior.